So I thought today would be smart to go walk through today and then the next two days we'll be, we'll get after it a little bit and have a lot of work to do on the next two days in our preparations for the season opener. Um, as far as uh, obviously everybody saw we got three players uh, on the COVID list. I'm not going to go into names, details, expectations as far as coming back. Um, obviously we'll, we'll deal with that accordingly, according to league rules and protocols. Um, and then uh, today, obviously we're still, I'm working with Chris and the staff on just some last minute roster moves. So those will, those will be tied up by four o'clock today. And, I'm sorry. And then one other note that uh, we did make a trade with the Eagles, as you might have seen, we made a trade with the Eagles for Matt Pryor. Um, you know, feel like Matt can, Matt can come in here and uh, obviously he's had some exposure to what we do being there with Nick there. Um, and, you know, he's a big uh, six, seven, three some. He's a big man, strong. Uh, feel like he can add some depth and, and help us out. Frank, how concerned are you that this season might go a little bit sideways because a lot of your top players are not vaccinated and COVID become a big issue already? We've said at the beginning of the year that whatever happens, we're not going to let it be a distraction. And, you know, we understand that at some level when things happen uh, on the outside, it is a distraction at some level. But if we are able to internally stay together as a team and stay focused on preparing for the next opponent, right? And for us, now that we're at this point of the season, all that really matters is the next opponent. And so that's just gonna be the mindset that we take. Circumstances are dealt to you individually and as a team that you just you have to learn how to not flinch and and just move forward and, and go with it so i think our guys are determined to do that orga organization doesn't mean that we're not trying to get better trying to improve trying to reduce the number of variables that are out there we'll follow the protocols we'll do everything to the letter of the law we'll continue to educate we'll continue to um, talk to people but that's where we're at. It's not going to be a distraction. Hey, Kenny, how much more can you do? How much more can you do internally? I mean, Jimmy talked strongly about it. You and Chris. How much more? I don't say arm twisting, but how much more can you do? Do you need to? Um, you know, it's it's a long season, you know, and it's a long season, and every every little bit helps. So um, that's I think that's our approach. It's the same way you would approach any other problem, you know, one day at a time, one person at a time, um, and, you know, just trying to put the team in the best position. Do you, feel, do, you, do you feel like with Carson jeopardizing his availability each week that he's lacking, failing in the leadership department at all considering the position he plays? Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to, you know, get into specific names as how, how each person and each player is dealing with COVID um, at this point. Um, we all know, we all know um, we've said a lot about it. So what I can say is that I know every one of our players, every one of our players um, cares very deeply about this team. Every one of our players who is here knows that we're on a mission. I really believe that every one of these players is a team first guy. It's a comp there's complexities to life. It's not easy, right? It's not easy. You got to deal with you know, you got to deal with the complexities of life and some of these decisions and you work through it as a family. That's the only way we know how to do it. We're working through it as a family and uh, we believe in our guys and we believe our guys are team first guys. Is there, when you hear a for the franchise quarterback and, and is there a responsibility for the franchise quarterback to be to do everything he can to be available? I, I mean, well, there's no question, uh, you know, every position is critically important. The franchise quarterback is a critically important position. It's a, you know, it's a, it's without question a leadership position. And, you know, as far as that goes, I would just say, you know, Carson in many ways is an exemplary, an exemplary leader. Um, are any of us the perfect leader? I, I don't know. I don't think so. So. Um, we all have we all have holes in our game somewhere, and um, we're all trying to get better, and we're all trying to learn. I'm trying. I'm still trying to learn as a leader. I I feel like this is year four as a head coach. I I feel like I'm just scratching the surface of what it means to be a leader, 
and I, I can get a lot better. I hope all of our players feel like that and that they look at the leadership responsibility that every one of them have as it's a growing, it's a growing proposition. I'm going to continue to grow as a player and as a leader. Frank, uh, you feel as like you have these discussions with guys now or before or whatever about uh, whatever the discussions are in terms of their vaccination status, when you hear their point of view, does any of what you hear from them ever frustrate you? Is it, do you understand it? Do you, what generally do you, how do you generally interpret what you're hearing? as the reasons for not doing it? No, I think it's fair. I've had a lot of conversations. I think it's fair to say that at times I get frustrated, uh, as I'm sure players you talk to get frustrated about certain things. Um, so, you know, I do try to listen. I, I, you know, I do try to listen and, and respect, but I, you know, I also don't shy away from saying what I believe and what I believe is right. Um, the research that I've done, I don't, hesitate in saying what I believe I think is best for the team, but we'll continue to reiterate that this is an individual decision. And so um, we respect that. That's all, you know, I mean, I don't know what else I can say about it. It's, it's, a, it's a complex issue. And Do you take the position that, that being more forceful is kind of productive perhaps, or I don't know how? I think being I more forceful can pay, I think being more forceful could play, pay short-term dividends, but it might cost you and some long-term sure. dividends. We talk a lot about trust, and so um, I, I think I learned this from, from a lot of great leaders, but I think I learned it more from Tony Dungy than anybody else, where sometimes the, it seems like the obvious answer is to come in with the hammer, and the problem with the hammer is that there's a lot of collateral damage that you don't see until later. I believe that what Chris and I talk about is we're building something long-term. We want to be a perennial contender. And we just believe in order to do that, it starts with trust. And uh, there has to be a relationship amongst the team and amongst the players, you know, of, of trust. And not everybody, we have to, that's a process. That's a process for us to learn what that is, what it looks like, each one of us. So we'll continue to go down that track. As far as being an individual decision, it's, it's, it's kind of not though, right? In terms of, because it has massive ramifications on, on the team and everybody else and other people can get it. So when, when players say it's a personal decision, do you, do you agree with them? Do you disagree with them? No, I think what you're saying is exactly right. They're, I think they're both true. Of course, it's an individual decision, but it does have consequences and ramifications to the team. And that's where it makes it so complex. What I think what most, what you're going to hear from most people who are in that camp is, you know, a lot of those, a lot of the decisions to not get vaccinated, I think, are from family, you know, more family type reasons. So what are you going to say about that? A guy's prioritizing his family. Is there anything wrong with prioritizing your family? Somehow you got to, you got to find a way to put the two together to say, you know, if you play on this team and if you play in this league, this is, this is where we're at. You know, this is what we're calling. So there's at some level, I try to explain that a little bit. Hey, I understand the dynamics, but also try to help explain and understand the bigger picture. Are you, are you worried about, about, hey, are you worried that this could happen on a Thursday or Friday in October, November, and you're, you know, you're missing Ryan Kelly and Carson, and, and this could be completely avoidable. As a coach, <laughs> that's got to drive you crazy. I don't worry about it, though. I really don't. Um, it is what it is. And so... Um, I believe in our team. I believe in our players. Um, we're going to continue to do what we do. And I believe that um, when it's all said and done, I believe that we're going to come out as, at a spot where we feel good about. That's what I believe. Okay, thanks, guys.